Hello my lovely friends, my name is Ava and today I have quite the stack of emotional romance books that might leave you crying, who knows. <laughs> Okay, so these are romance books that are very emotional to me personally. We're gonna talk about them today because I sometimes like to get my heart ripped out. <laughs> the first one that I have is The Coldest Winter by Brittany Cherry. Brittany Cherry is the queen of like breaking your heart, but then slowly putting it back together right into the book. Like she writes romances phenomenally well that are emotional and real like these romances feel so real so the coldest winter is a forbidden romance between milo and starlet the two of them have a little bit of a tryst when they meet each other one night at a college party but then after that night they uh don't see each other again but they can't stop thinking about the other person like for some reason they're like why can't i stop thinking about this person like they're on my mind all the time like i should not be feeling this way one day they figure out uh, that what they did was actually quite forbidden because of something. They learned something about each other. And I'll just leave it there. This might be a student teacher tutor-esque situation. So I'm gonna leave that there. But this book deals a lot with grief. So like, please be aware of that. Both of them are dealing with like familial death and like depression and loss. Um, more so Milo, like Milo's like parental loss is quite fresh and his dad is not like dealing well himself with the loss of um, his wife. Starlet is trying to help him learn how to cope and live and deal with the fact that his mother's gone and his mother would not want him to live the way he's living right now. And whew, this book is a lot, but it's beautiful. It's so beautiful. While we're on the subject of Brittany Cherry, I would love to mention The Air He Breathes, which deals with grief as well. So our hero and heroine in here, they have dealt with a lot of loss in the past few years. The heroine lost her husband. She's now a single mother and the hero has lost his wife and his son in an accident. The hero is actually her next door neighbor and they kind of use each other in a sense to get over the loss that they've experienced. They picture their spouse as the other person when they're together, which is not okay, it's not healthy. And then they realize that and they cut things off. They're like, this is not okay. And then they slowly start to love the other person for who they actually are. Um, and that sounds kind of complicated, um, but grief is weird. Everyone deals with grief differently and not one person is gonna grieve the same. And they learn that throughout this book and they lean on each other and learn how to live without their spouse, and they're feeling very guilty that they're having these feelings for someone else. This book is beautiful and amazing. I need more people to read it. There's this whole series in general. Fantastic. I obviously have to mention the Full Tilt duet by Emma Scott, the first one being Full Tilt, and the second one being Whoop All In. You have to read these books together, or you will not get the HEA. Like, you won't get the happy ending if you just read this book. Like, you will be sobbing on the floor with this book, and so you gotta read book two. <laughs> So I won't talk about what this book is because it'll spoil what this book is about, but this is the romance between Casey and Jonah. Casey is going through a lot of stuff in here. She is a part of this all girl rock band and she is dealing with substance abuse. She is an alcoholic. During a show one night, she's like rip roaring drunk in the middle of a show and her bodyguard ends up putting her in the back of the limo and is like, tells the limo driver, just take her home. We don't want to deal with her right now, take her home. The driver is our hero in here, Jonah. And he drives Casey home to realize that she doesn't have a key on her, no one's home, and the house is like pitch black. Like he cannot leave the woman on the porch, like this intoxicated, passed out woman on the porch. So he ends up taking her home to his house and she sleeps on his couch. And when she wakes up, she's mortified. And um, she's very intrigued by Jonah and just wants to know more about him. And he helps her with her problem a little bit and helping her realize there's more to life than like feeling this way and like sometimes feeling depressed and upset like is the process of life but there's also beauty to life and Jonah helps her see that so I love this duet so much I don't know if I've ever cried as much as I've cried reading these two books like this book is what happens after this one and it's totally needed and you need the book you need to read it you will be sobbing after reading this book so you need this one <laughs> so don't read this one alone another emma scott i think emma scott and Brittany cherry are really good at breaking your heart and putting it together so another emma scott that left me sobbing at moments it's there's a happy ending all by the way for all these books just wanted to mention that um but this one whew, this is forever right now by emma scott this book at times a very emotional dealing with a lot of heavy topics so our heroine here darlene 
she just got out of rehab her um a jail rehab i don't remember i think it was jail because her ex-boyfriend got her into drugs and she's like i'm never going to ever put myself in that situation ever again i'm not going back to that lifestyle so don't worry drugs are not used or like mentioned really at all in this book it's just in her past she's like i'm never gonna do that ever again and she was like well i really want to do what i wanted to do before i got into this situation was to move to san francisco and to become like a prolific dancer so that's what she does she moves to san francisco and there she meets her very grumpy neighbor that lives below her his name is sawyer he's studying to become a lawyer and he is a single father to a infant baby the baby's name is olivia before sawyer was a father he was very much like a party frat boy um but then apparently olivia's mother just leaves the baby on his doorstep in the middle of a party and is like leaves a note that's like olivia's yours take care of her i can't do it anymore sawyer's like I have to change my life around. So that's what he does. He changes his whole life around to provide for this baby. He's very rude towards Darlene at first because he doesn't want to like lead her on even though he's very attracted to her because he does not want Olivia to be Olivia to be confused. He wants a stable life for his daughter. But then he gets in a bind one night and he needs a babysitter and Darlene offers and there starts their like friendship that leads into a romance. Like, oh, this book is a lot. It deals a lot with like being a parent. The single dad aspect in here 10 out of 10 would recommend but this book will also leave you on the floor crying because of certain things that i do not want to spoil Ooh, next is a mafia romance like trilogy this is the mafia and his angel by lila james like this book series has every single trigger warning you can think of it has everything everything like it's a lot so at the beginning of this book our heroine is uh like destined to marry like arranged to marry this mafia guy who she is terrified of so she sees an opportunity to run away so she does she ends up running into the woods and on the side of the road there's this limo sitting there with um like its door open and she's like okay and she like jumps into it. or a car i don't know she jumps into the back seat she's like hiding in the car and the car ends up driving away and stopping at this a very large home and she's like, okay, um, I don't know what to do now. And she's very sheltered from the world, by the way. So she just gets out of the car and runs into the house, finds a bedroom, hides into the bed. That's where our hero ends up finding her, who's a big mafia boss, who is actually the rival mafia boss to the guy she was gonna marry. And so he finds this terrified woman under a bed in his home. And he's like, what is going on? Who is this woman? Are you a spy? So for the majority of this book, he thinks that this girl has been sent to spy on him. But he ends up hiring her to be a maid at his home to like keep your enemy's close, right? He thinks that this girl has been hired to come spy on him. But he soon realizes like this girl has just been traumatized her entire life um, by the mafia he like hates, the mafia family he hates. Um, so each book in the series is about that couple and how they will ultimately be together. So this book, oh, full of triggers. So please be aware of that. It has like every single trigger you can think of. It's in this book. So be aware. Next, I have Fractured Sky by Catherine Cowles. This is the last book in the Tattered and Torn series, which is one of Catherine Cowles' um, romantic suspense series. I think all of her books are romantic suspense, but this is the last one in the Tattered and Torn series. You read in book one in the series uh, that Shiloh, our heroine in this book, when she was a kid, she was kidnapped by this kind of kooky guy and kept in a barn for like days. And um, she still has trauma from that experience and what her family had to go through and all this stuff. So She's just dealing with a lot mentally. She's able to find peace and solace when she goes onto Ramsey's property. He owns this like horse ranch. She just sits there and watches him work with horses and she finds peace with that. She loves horses so much. And so she's feeling very overwhelmed by her family, her parents, she's living in their home still. And Ramsey just all of a sudden offers for her to stay on his property, on the guest house on his property. And she agrees and there starts their romance. Both of them have past trauma and past experience. Ramsey was like falsely convicted of a crime and spent some time in prison. It like messed him up at points. Like he was not okay for a while afterwards. So he's slowly healing from that. So he's not really much of a people person, but like Shiloh helps him kind of get out of his box a little bit. And they're so sweet and so beautiful. This romance is a beautiful story. Miss Sheridan is another writer that just like can rip your heart out. So this is most of all you. This was about Crystal and Gabriel. Crystal has been dealing with a lot of things, a lot of stuff. She is a dancer at a certain type of club, okay? And Gabriel comes into that club to ask her for, not a favor, but he wants to like hire her for a certain reason, not the reason you're thinking. Um, so Gabriel, when he was younger, he's actually kidnapped as a little boy by this man and was living in this guy's basement for years and was sexually assaulted, assaulted by this guy for years. He ends up escaping later on in life. 
and he really wants to not be all terrified when someone just touches him, like touches him, like literally touches his hand or his shoulder or something. He is terrified when people touch him. So he like offers Crystal, like I'll pay you if you just help me feel okay with touch again. And so she at first says no, but then comes back to saying yes um to help him out because she really needs the money and despite what gabriel has gone through like he is a total sunshine this is a grumpy sunshine romance but the hero is the sunshine and the heroine is the grump like despite what gabriel's gone through he loves life despite it both of them are going through quite a lot of stuff like emotionally and crystal i feel like more so also physically crystal at the beginning of this book like right after she declines him at first she ends up getting like beaten behind the um the club that she works at and she has no one to take care of her so gabriel offers that she stay at his guest house with him so um he like takes care of her there's a lot of caretaking in here so this one was very very emotional for a historical one i have let it shine by lisa cole this one is a more modern historical romance though because this book does take place in the civil rights movement so zephronia is our heroine in here and she's a black woman and growing up um, she was bullied by some white kids and Ivan, who is also white, but he came and rescued her basically from being beaten up by these horrible boys, basically takes her back home with him and they become close friends, best friends, um, but they haven't seen each other in years. It jumps back to like present day for them, which is the 1960s. And they're both a part of this group of the civil rights movement and they end up reconnecting and they end up falling in love with each other. This is a very short little novella that I really enjoyed. Um, there is like a forbidden aspect to it because during this time period, like people did not approve of white people and black people being together. And so they're having to deal with that stigma. Um, and racism. There are multiple emotional parts of this book and this book does get very serious at times so just please be aware before you go into it. One of the most emotional historical romances that I've ever read is definitely Highlander Most Wanted by Maya Banks. This is a Highlander romance obviously and our heroine in here you read about her in book one which is Never Seems to Scott like she was taken by this horrible man who would essay her sexual assault her like all day every day but in that first book something happens to that guy where she is now free in a sense and she is rescued by um the hero of this story who is the brother to graham from book one the heroine here faces a lot of ridicule and trauma because the people of this village thought that she was with this horrible man willingly when in fact she was not she was beaten and scarred she has scars all over her face bowen montgomery is there to save her and to be that sense of refuge for her so this one is a lot at times, but it's ultimately a beautiful read. Anyway, so you have it. Those were 10 emotional romances. Let me know down below if you've read any of these books or if you plan to. And if you don't feel like commenting any of those things, you can leave me the crying emoji in the comment section down below. But anyways, thank y'all so, so much for watching. I will see y'all soon in my next one. Bye y'all.